Hello. I'm gonna play some Blitz. I'm I'm tired. I didn't. I'm trying to fix my sleep schedule to get up super early for this thing I have to do tomorrow. Um, so I'm kind of useless. I don't know why I feel like I should play speed chess, but it's like the only thing I feel like I can do. I can't read. I can't write. I can't. I can't study. So I can maybe play. I will do my best. I can't even remember how to pause the video. I'm gonna have to check. I've been away for a while, so I'll pause. It is F9. I would have thought F10. Oh, the game has begun, so no need to pause. I've played this guy before. Uh, all right, I'll keep playing the Sicilian, even though it's my rating's high, so I'll just keep playing what I play. But I mean, it's mostly garbage what I play. <laughs> I just keep doing it though. I, I used to actually know what to do, and now I don't anymore. Um, am I supposed to go queen a5 here? I don't know why I think I think that. Doesn't make sense, right? I'll just do this. I don't know why I was thinking queen a5. Alright, I'll attack the bishop, we'll move it away. Is there any reason why the bishop's better on h6 here? Not one that I can tell. I'm just going to castle. That would have been useful on h6 in this position. Alright, whenever I... Let's just sacrifice the pawn, get some open lines. And he doesn't even take them. I think I'm going to go h5, because it's hard for him to go g4. Which is the only real way to start an attack. And... I'm going to try to attack on the queen side. Right, yeah, this bishop h6 would have been interesting because it did stop his castle in queen side, and my bishop on g7, sure, it's attacking e5, but does that really do very much right now? Would have been interesting. Oh, is he yawning? I mean, at some point, maybe you should take this pawn off, to be honest. But nobody likes to get give the opponent open lines. So he's trying to resist. Knight e4, the idea of knight e5 maybe. Rook b8 seems useful. I'll just do it. <laughs> I feel like I've played this guy many times, and he's a tough player. If he goes knight g5, I will play queen to b6. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I'll do. You know, knight a5 is interesting somewhere, but maybe not now. I think queen b6. Uh, getting an edge on the clock, which is nice. It's like, how does he attack exactly? I don't know. Right, I'll go queen b6 anyway. I mean, I'm kind of happy that by this king b1 because he wasted a move in his um, any attacking ideas he had. He's slowing himself down. I think a5 with the idea of a4 is difficult to meet. Knight g5, I just ignore it because if he captures on e6, I just recapture with my d pawn. Everything is okay. Let me get some water. I have a really high rating right now. I just keep winning if I recall correctly, despite not playing very often. really using a lot of time. It's, it's a difficult position. Well, I'll just do what I planned. Keep the keep the time pressure on him, you know, because a4 is a, is a serious threat. It's a very uncomfortable move to face in a speed, speed chess game. I'll take with the d-pawn if he takes on e6. Even, even taking with the f-pawn is interesting, but it makes too many weaknesses, like g6-pawn. My d7-pawn could be a weakness sometime. So this is the most solid choice to just capture with the d-pawn. And now we have a huge edge in the clock, and we have some serious attacking chances. How should he deal with it? I don't know, queen... He can go queen e3 at some point, try to trade queens. This endgame's not great for him. I don't know. I'm thinking also knight b4 to d5 is a good idea. The knight on d5 looks really, really strong. It's 
hard for him to do anything about it. Hmm. All right, I might go knight b4 now, but then he goes bishop e4, and then bishop to b7. I want to trade those bishops, I think. My bishop's bad. So let's just play positionally like that. He'll go bishop e4, I'll go bishop b7, and then I get this d5 square. My bishop on c8 was kind of locked in, right? So this is pretty pretty nice for us. If he takes, I'm pretty sure I'll take with the rook so we're able to quickly double double the pieces. Um, I think bishop to d5 gains a tempo over bishop takes e4. Let's just do it. I mean, even pawn takes is interesting, but this looks like the right choice. And we just have a clear, big advantage in the clock, positionally doing super well. This knight on d5 is incredible. Now we have to think. He wants to go knight e4. a4 is very strong. Um, but it seems like I should just build the pressure. Continue building the pressure. Uh, a4 next move after... Whoa. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to lose. This is like really, really tough position <laughs> to play. Um, I think next move I will go b4. If the queen f3, b4, rook takes d5. Okay, you can't go rook d5 anymore. I think b4 with the threat of knight c3 looks pretty strong. I have to. I don't know if he has any tricks. Like knight e6, queen takes. If knight f7, king takes. He has no no tricks. He's down three minutes on the clock. All right, so I think a3 is good. He's gaining, yeah, a3 is strong. Because if pawn, if b3, rook c3 wins the bishop on g3. So I can make this weakness on c3. All right, so now, I mean, this is one of those positions where you're just going to win on time. So it's like you don't want to, don't want to be too precise. I mean, rook c3 looks winning. If knight takes, pawn takes, yeah. Oh, he can move the queen away. I, I didn't realize that. Whatever. Because his knight on e4 is defending the bishop on g3. But after he does this... Uh, I was going to go queen a5. Looks pretty good. I should keep moving fast, just in case. Whoa. Ah, uh, I mean, it's like, this is, this is pretty good for me. Knight c3 check is the problem. And he resigns. All right, so a very smooth win. We were never in it. Oh, who's talking to me here? He gave me a GG. Very nice. Or a friendly guy. Uh, let's take a look at this game. Because somehow it seemed like it played well. Uh, when the queen comes to b3, it's not usually played for some reason. I don't know why not. I figured I'd gain a tempo on his bishop. Now was the moment where I thought like maybe the bishop on h6 is good. It takes away his option of castling queenside. The thing is, I don't know that he's going to castle queenside. Like when I played the game, I thought he might just castle kingside, which is reasonable. So I just did this. I played this move. I'm sure the computer won't love it and will suggest that black should capture it with something. Let's check what the computer thinks, actually. Oh, wow. I think the position is not that good for white. I mean, it's 0.24, but he has to take on b5 for that to happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just unpleasant to take on b5 in a blitz game. It's just really unpleasant. You open lines. Even the computer, it, it says it's good for him, but like, not that good. He's taking a pawn off, but I'm getting easy play for a blitz game. So once he does this, now I felt like rook b8 seems solid. Yeah, and the computer already likes my position, which is surprising, but his queen is in the way. Like, like I make moves that attack and push his queen around. So he moved the king. I mean, I'm just getting easy development. My plan is simple, a5, a4. And like I always plan this move to just ignore it. I think the best idea I made in the game was the, the recognition of what pieces to trade. Like this knight on d5 that it would be really strong. Uh, the reason was I didn't want like when I went a3 for him to go queen e3. I, I guess in this position that's no longer a thing and and I can do this. It's like 
I don't know, b4, you can take on a4, I guess, but it's... I don't know. It's hard to believe this is good for him. I don't know, maybe it's okay. But I just played positionally. I just figured this knight in d4 is strong. B4, d5, sorry. And once I trade, that this knight on d5 will be very hard to remove, which I was correct. And now, you know, a common trick, a common mistake might be to do this in knight d5, but then he gained a tempo with his rook. Uh, he, he was able to get it to e4. So, there, you know, there's a common saying. To, well, it's not common. There's a video called To Take as a Mistake. And, you know, when you take something, it, it allows their piece to come to the square they want to they want to go to. So instead I make him take me. And now he's lost a tempo. He when he took me, my knight came to the square it wanted to go to instead of his rook coming to this square. And I'm not saying that e4 is such a great square, but why let him do it? So now he has to figure out what to do. His position is miserable. I, I think it's really bad. Okay, I mean Houdini has me as a stockfish, whatever this is, it has me as like almost winning which is surprising. I'm not up any material, but positionally he's just busted. I could go a4, but in, in situations like this when you're up in time and you have an attack, it's, I feel like it's best to keep the tension and just kind of not let him know exactly where you're going to strike. And this is just a weakening move. And a3. Oh, I played... a3 would have been strong too. Again, I just wanted to keep the tension a bit. Oh, no, it's actually a threat. This is threatening to win the exchange. With knight c3, like if he does some random move, let's say he takes the pawn, uh, it's checkmate. Next move on b2. So I play a3. He can't take his rook c3, wins this bishop. And I did this anyway, because if he takes, I take with the pawn, and then queen takes b2, queen to b2 mate in the following move. Uh, and, you know, he's just lost here. If he takes, I would go... Trying to find the easiest win. Um, Probably just pawn take. King c3 leads to queen a3 mate. And if here, I think... Uh, knight b4. Oops. Yeah, this is mate. Because I'm threatening knight c2 and queen a2. And then he, he resigned because knight c3 is coming. Overall, very solid performance. Uh, the guy's a decent player. I think he's beaten me before. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.